James, Eric, congratulations. You're both in the final. Now you're both one step closer to redemption, the title of Forged and Fire champion, and a check for $10,000. When you came here, you used our tools and equipment to forge signature blades in your signature style. Now we're sending you back to your home forges to recreate an iconic weapon from history. That weapon is a sword breaker. Used by knights across 16th century Europe, the Swordbreaker is a unique dagger designed to render enemies defenseless on the battlefield. The weapon's sharp, comb-like teeth could entrap and snap an opponent's sword in half, while its razor-sharp edge and tip were employed to deliver fatal slashes or stabs. The Swordbreaker was so versatile in its ability to disarm and counterattack, it became the standard sidearm of its day. Today, it's immortalized in the PlayStation game Sword Art Online, Hollow Fragment where it's wielded by the character, Philia. Good luck, Bladesmiths. We'll see you in five days. I'm back in my home forge. Last time I was on, I was sent out first. So to make it through to the finals, I'm elated. I'm assuming we're going to try to break some swords, and I'm all right with that. I'm actually thinking of going with a club design for my teeth. It's given them a lot more mass, a lot more weight, and a lot more meat to bite into and to dig. So. Hopefully, that will prove to be a good design. Maybe someday it'll end up in a museum. I'm gonna establish my point, kind of narrow that down, taking the corners in. I'm making a lot more progress than I expected, but the hard part's coming up. The hard part's gonna be the meticulous parts of this build. Time for day two. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill the holes and then finish cutting all of those teeth in before heat treat. That looks pretty wicked right there. I was originally gonna cut these into a spade look, but the triangular look is really badass. It's gonna save me a lot of file time. Oh, so pretty. I'm gonna let this forge warm up a little bit. I gotta get my quench tank, then I'll be ready for a hardening cycle. I don't usually quench blades this big, so it's gonna be difficult. All right. I'm heating up some scrap material to heat the oil. See if I can get about 120 degrees in there. You would need to heat up the oil because you don't wanna shock the steel while hardening because it will potentially crack. Damn it, what the f is going on? I gotta, I'm just fixing to waste about two gallons of oil. The steel punches a hole in the bottom of my PVC cap. That f sucks. I don't know what to do now. This is gonna set me back a half day. I need to find a quench tank or I'm done. I'm ready to get going. I'm ready to get the teeth on the blade today. This is the most critical part of the build, period. This is the very first time I've ever cut into a blade other than a gut hook. I'm going to hot chisel them out just to see how they look, making sure that that's the right decision. Of the designs I have for my teeth, they could go drastically wrong. Each one of these teeth are a potential spot for breaking. So I have to be very meticulous on where each placement goes. I think it's going to be mean. With the heat treat, I don't know what to expect with it. I, I truly don't. If there's any stress left in the metal, it's going to come out. And that is usually in the shape of a warp. That's got me a little concerned, i got to say. If anything is going to make me throw up today, it's going to be the heat treat. That's really good. They're nice and straight, and they look terrific. I'm happy. I had to find a different tank. And finally, I found a metal five-gallon can and quenched my blade. It looks really good. The details I'm working on today is I'm going to be finishing the guard, shape that up with some files, make it nice and round, shape my handle, and do my test. Ooh, that's nice. I already have a piece of purple heartwood for my handle and my drift for making the hole for the guard. It's going to now become my pommel. Everything looks great. Now I have to get that primary edge sharpened and then do some cutting tests on it. I got my daughters out there and my tortoise Geo. They want to see what this play can do. When I was out in the first round, my daughters were both sad for me. But having the second opportunity to go back and show them that if you really put your mind to it, you can achieve greatness, it feels good to me. That was pretty awesome. Almost killed Geo. To see what lethal damage your blade can do, I will deliver killing blows of slashes and thrust on this ballistics dummy. The sword breaker comes from a style of called main gauche, which means left hand. Therefore, I will see the offensive capabilities of your knife with my left hand. James, you're up first. You ready? Let's do it.
Well, James, as an offensive weapon, it slashes nicely and punctures easily for a deep cut. But at the same time, I know that sword breakers have to be held this way. It wants to go this way. Nonetheless, it cuts, it stabs, and it will kill. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Eric, your turn. You ready? Yes, sir. Well, Eric, if I need to use it offensively, it's easy to index and switch to that edge. When I did thrust and slash out, we got to test the edge, and it lacerates. Your blade will kill. Thank you. Now, to test the sharpness of the edge of your blade, I'm going to cut the rope first, the fish, and then the meat, our forged and fired trifecta. <laughs> <laughs> James, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, James, wicked sharp. Going from there, the sword breaker in particular, it's a left-handed weapon. Now, that ring is to protect your knuckles. Oops. Yes, sir. Other than that, this thing is a beast. Thank you. All right, Eric. Let's do it. OK. <laughs> <laughs> All right, first off, that's sharp. That just went right through the rope, right through the fish. Didn't cut all the way. That was me, not the knife. You can see the cuts on that beef. Yeah, yes, sir. Just clean, straight through. Knuckle guard above the knuckles. Crenellation's forward. They can catch with that, stop things. That's great. All in all, I think it's a great looking piece, and it is definitely sharp. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, this is the strength test. The sword breaker's teeth were designed to grab onto an opponent's weapon and hold on fast. Now, to test the strength and durability of your blades, we've hooked them into our mechanical contraption here. What that piston is going to do, it's going to pull your blade that way. Bending that rapier, putting a lot of torque on your blade. Let's see if the teeth of your weapon will hold onto that rapier. James, you're up first. You ready for this? I'm ready. Let's do this. Three, two, one, pull. Damn it, man. <laughs> oh. OK. You picked up an ever so slight bend. I mean, there was a lot of pressure on that. And you could actually see that weapon bending. You can see what it did to this rapier blade. All in all, well done. Thank you. Eric, your turn. Let's put it to the test. In three, two, one, pull. All right, Eric, what happened in our test here is the shape of your teeth, the way they widened towards the outside, yep. allowed that rapier to twist and pop out, as opposed to when you see these historically, that they have sort of a head on these teeth. Mm -hmm. So once they go into that section, it's harder for them to escape. The fact that this opening here is so wide, it just allows that to happen. Sure. Other than that, I mean, it. It held up. You bent the rapier over right until it popped. Your blade stayed true, even after all that flexing. But those wide teeth seem to be a bit of an issue. My blade grabbed the rapier and torqued it better than his. But his sword didn't warp. Mine did slightly. So we're still neck and neck. James, Eric, this was your shot at redemption. However, in this arena of competition, there can only be one champion. The Forged and Fire champion is. James. Damn it. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much. Eric, please surrender your blade. I agree with the judge's decision. I have some regrets of choosing the club pattern for the blade. But last episode I was on, it definitely did not show what I'm capable of doing. This time, I was able to put it forward a competition-worthy blade. So uh, that's redemption itself. James, congratulations. 
You've redeemed yourself, and you're the Forged and Fire champion who also receives that check for $10,000. How do you feel? Oh, uh, man, it's been a long road. I'll tell you what, I have redeemed myself. All right, James, please present your weapon to the judges. It's much more fun to get to present your weapon to the judges than having to surrender it. Two years ago, being out in the first round and making it to the championship round, and then now even winning, man, it's, this is truly a redemption. My daughters will be proud. They can tell their friends, hey, my dad's a fortune fire champion. <laughs>